Hi guys, so today um, I want to quickly talk about engine management and why I'm completely changing the route that I was initially going to go down. Um, but all will be explained and I've got a little unboxing to show you as well. So as most of you might be aware, uh, I was initially going to use a DET3 on the Micro. And it did work, but as most of you are probably aware, it made its way onto the MX-5. It wasn't really that I was going to be chasing performance on the MX-5, it was just there to one side, so I may as well have used it. However, it didn't do what I wanted it to, the MX-5 really didn't like interfacing with it, so it ended up getting removed. Now, I'm not saying that they're bad at what they do, there's just certain things that I will explain later in the video that I wanted the extra protection to make sure that my engine would not only be powerful, but that I would be able to protect it if the worst did happen, like it ran lean or something. I wanted to be able to have some measure of protection. Which this little thing, yes, it tunes the ECU and it tunes your air fuel ratio with your um, by changing your fueling, and it allows you to control your timing as well. But there isn't really a protection measure. There is only tuning settings. So I'll quickly explain for you guys how these little things work, what they do and how they do it. Because um, I've had a few people ask me and I've seen many people on forums not exactly knowing how these work. So I'm hoping I'm going to be able to clear that up for you a little bit better. So when you get your DET3 it will arrive like this with the connector unplugged. And the connector itself won't have these wires in. The wires will be loose in the box and you'll have to connect whichever wires you need to the specific pins on the back of here. On the flip side you obviously have the diagram that shows which pins do what and on the back of this connector which the this connector will come completely um, vacant it won't have anything in there at all you'll have to put the wires in on the backs of the connectors you'll see the tiny little numbers that relate to obviously these numbers here. So I'm just going to go into this briefly to sort of explain to you what needs to be done. Yeah so obviously your two main connectors are going to be your 12 volt switch and your ground, which mine are to these pins here, the red one and the black one. We're going to take the ignition in from the trigger wire that runs from the ECU to the distributor. Now there is an ignition, uh, there is a diagram online, if anyone needs any help I can try and link them to the diagram that was used. Um, but basically we're going to find that wire, cut it, and then we're going to put one end from the ECU into the DET3 and then the out from number 6 will be from the DET3 back to where the original wire was running to so all we're doing is literally cutting the wire from the ECU putting it into this and then the, the bit that was dangling we're going to connect that to the other side of the DET3 now you can't connect anything to analog 2 because that is hard wired to your map sensor and now you need to run a vacuum line to this so that this um, can, can read the pressure inside the manifold to know boost or whether it's a vacuum that way you can sort of understand the load of which the engines under at that point in time so that's a very important part to either link to something on the inlet manifold or any other vacuum source you can find that's stable. We also need to consider our MAF sensor and how we're going to intercept the wires to that to control us with the fueling. So for our MAF we're going to use one of our analog inputs apart from number two because obviously that's your MAF sensor. So analog one we want to take the wire that runs from the MAF sensor to the ECU which is the main signal wire that fluctuates from 0 to 5 volts. Then we're going to cut that wire again from the car is going to go into number one and then the output is going to come out from analog out here so 17 will then be connected back to the wire that we cut off from the ECU for the MAF sensor that will allow us to control the fueling then we want a, I used analog 4 as my TPS sensor, which is my throttle position sensor. There's only the one wire for that on the ECU and I believe it's blue and yellow, is it or blue and white, one of the two? I can find out for you, uh, if, if needs be. And then you connect that wire directly to that so you can read the throttle position sensor as to how much, um, 
as to how much throttle is being applied. That's pretty much it, and you're ready to roll, so it's really simple to install. I can find a diagram if anyone needs a proper diagram to go off. By far the easiest way I'm going to be able to explain this is by drawing it, so they're not going to be the best drawings, however, you will get the idea, I hope. So on this right hand side, we're going to have the K11 ZCU. On this left hand side, we're going to have the engine. And usually the sensors from the ECU would be connect the sensors from the engine, sorry, would be connected directly to the ECU. What we're going to do is place the DC3 directly in the middle. That way that we can control what those sensors are saying to the ECU and what the ECU is saying to the sensors. So as for our ignition timing, what we're going to do is find the trigger wire that runs from the ECU to the trigger of the distributor on the K11. So that's the dizzy. So this trigger wire, we're going to make a break in it and we're going to connect the DZ3 in between. That way everything the ECU says to this trigger wire, we're going to have the capability to intercept and adjust that signal. Now the only way that we're going to be able to adjust that signal with this DZ3 is by putting a delay on it. How does this work with retarding the signal? So usually, if this ECU decided to trigger the ignition cycle without the DT3 in place, as soon as this signal is sent out, it would be received at the distributor and it would make the necessary ignition cycle. If we put a DT3 in place, what we can then do is control how long it takes for the signal to come through here before it reaches. If, for example, we want to retard the ignition, if this ECU says fire and then we put a delay of 3 milliseconds at the DT3 here, this ignition cycle will still be fired at the same time. However, 3 milliseconds later, it will arrive at the distributor, meaning the signal was retarded making our ignition slightly later. So that's how we can easily control ignition, ignition timing. As for fueling, how we control the um, fueling is from the MAF sensor here to the ECU, once again there is usually a direct route, oh you thought let me draw, there is usually a direct route to the ECU. Once again if we put the DT3 in the way what we can do is adjust the signal with the voltage because this is from 0 to 5 volts that it will range, it will range maybe it will vary as the airflow increases the voltage will increase. If we increase that voltage here the ECU believes more air is entering into the engine. That way this ECU will output a signal to the injectors to provide more fuel for what it believes is more air. So if we say, at, as we're revving the engine, 1.3 volts is being registered on the sensor side. If we increase our fuel map on the output, it will say maybe 1.9 because we've increased the fueling. So the ECU sees 1.9, even though there is only 1.3 being registered. It sees 1.9, sends that new signal to the engine to put more fuel in. So that's the basic principle of how this works. So as you can see, it does give you timing control and it does give you fueling control, however, in a very, very basic manner. Now some ECUs don't like being messed with in this. Um, the K11 can sort of go into closed loop, open loop randomly and it overwrites some of the adjustments that you're putting in. If it's um, got the lambda sensor plugged in, sometimes that can override it because it reads the lambda sensor reading and makes a control without this in the way. It effectively cuts it out of the loop. Um, and it's all very hit and miss. You find that your AFRs tend to be quite messy. Now. If anything happened and this engine started to knock 
and the pistons were knocking here. Apart from the ECU standard functionality, we have got nothing to register that knock and make an adjustment to say we need to take timing out. So what that eventually will happen is you'll have rod failure and your nice little pistons will end up either bent or snapped. Now, I didn't want any of that to happen after spending this much time building a car, so I purchased this. And I'm going to show you a little unboxing right now. So anyway, getting into the unboxing, let's get on with it. Hope no stabbed anything. Yes, this is exciting. <laughs> so I'm going to pull all the things out first and then we'll have a look at what we've actually got. Okay, so this is everything that was in the package and it's basically everything that I'm going to need management wise to make sure my micro doesn't just implode the first time that we take it for mapping. So rather than wiring this ECU in on its own, uh, I decided to go with their plug-in harness which is for an SR20 however it does state that it can be used with the CG13 so if we get that open okay so that is the uh, harness adapter which basically looks like the female side of the actual ECU itself and then the patch lead that you can plug directly into there rather than faffing about with different all wires and connectors this is just basically plug and play so just snap it in and we should be ready to go with minimal effort it comes with an air temp sensor so that can go into the manifold That's a nice little sensor there just have to find a home for that somewhere on the engine also purchased a knock sensor because most people that know about the CG13 will know it's very knock limited when it comes to sort of boost. This ECU incorporates knock protection so we can sort of measure what's happening with the engine and if anything was to happen, worst case scenario, it will shut the engine down rather than bending rods. That's a theory anyway. I've ordered a th uh, three port boost solenoid so that we can do boost control and that can all be mapped in electronically rather than guessing around with bleed valves so that's going to be more precise and obviously the main thing get this open in here there it is the Haltec Elite 1500 ECU, which will be the main thing, can, which will be controlling my micro turbo and hopefully be more precise than the DET3 or this tune or anything like that. So I'm happy, really happy with that. They're throwing in some extra goodies as well stickers that'll definitely be going on the car. A nice key lanyard, another little sort of key ring, which is cool. I like that fabric key ring, and an awesome t shirt. Yeah, so thanks very much guys. I'm really happy with that. Can't wait to get it installed into the car. Thank you for all your help and putting up with all my questions. Luke especially, legend. He put up with all my questions. Didn't hesitate to find out the information I needed. So yeah, thanks to all the guys at Haltech. So with me going with this uh, patch harness, it's actually made, made my life a hell of a lot easier because obviously all these wires, it means I haven't got to bother connecting them. I'm not going to end up messing up any connections on there because it's all done for me. The only thing it states that I actually need to do, oh, if it'll focus, is I've just got to swap a jumper. So I've got to just move two pins down and that should just be inside here. So I'm just going to pull that apart. There's just two little screws. Oh, not focusing again. There we go. Undo them two little screws and then we'll see what's inside. As you can see, that's the jumpers, there's two little jumpers. They're in position A and position D. 
according to the paperwork they need to be in position B and C so I need to just pull these little jumpers out there we go and then this one is in position B that's position B there and this one in position C there we go B and C now just pop it back together so that's all back together I've just snapped in the connectors at the one side of the harness so you can see what that looks like so that obviously goes into your normal micro ECU connector with a little 10mm bolt and then this here comes along and plugs into the top of the Haltech there's a bigger connector and there's a there's a larger connector and a smaller connector and that just pushes in snaps in there I can't really do it with one hand but yeah it does and the other one once again they snap in there and that's your Elite 1500 you have got this little waterproof or damp proof or whatever it is um, connector for your USBs and other accessories that seats really nicely into there yeah so bar them connectors the only other thing you'll require to run is actually a vacuum line for the inbuilt map sensor um, just run it through the firewall and onto the back of here with some vacuum line but yeah apart from that it's all ready to go so it's a, it's like a composite material but it's very nicely made all the logos are absolutely beautifully in, like cast or engraved in they're beautiful but um, yeah that should make life a lot easier and obviously it's going to be a much neater install as well so thumbs up for simplicity the other thing I've had to work out for this install is the um, air temp sensor and where I'm going to mount that now it's just a little threaded sensor and this just has to sit in the flow of air in the intake so it can read the air temperature um, and basically by using the air temperature and the map sensor for the pressure I should be able to run without a MAF because I can take it off the VE charts rather than a, air, a normal air fuel ratio chart but where I wanted to mount this I wasn't sure so I bought a regular aluminium bend off eBay and I bought a boss kit like a little boss from Dan ST Engineering uh, and then I just had this welded on by a company down the road from me so I can just literally, oh yeah, just throw it in there literally <laughs> I can just thread that straight into there and that when it's all the way in will sit in the airflow nicely I've also got a little boost take off here so I can reboost pressure with its own source. You don't want too many things using the same reference because it can cause signal interference between the, the different things and you want as clean of a signal as you can get. But this will just be mounted as close to the, the throttle body as I can get it. So yeah, another package that I've had turned up and I'm just going to quickly cut open for you. So this one is a package that's arrived from Viper Performance. These guys do all performance hoses and clamps and everything that you need really for intercooler systems, oil systems, pretty much anything hose related, anything that's to do with plumbing. They do kits for cars, they do all sorts of things. Have a look on their website, viperperformance.co.uk. Um, but yeah, these are the hoses that I've ordered. Some really big, long 90s, so that I can route them where I need them. Oh, that's great, that's brilliant. They chucked in a load of stickers. Awesome. They'll definitely be going in the car. And some other 90s, including, it should be, yeah, there we go, a 180, which that will be needed for the hot side. And a little adapter to take it off the turbo to 2.5 inch for the Mishimoto intercooler. So that's brilliant as well. It's always good to see car parts. Does anyone else get like really excited when car parts arrive? Even if they're only the smallest of things, like it's the best thing ever. So I'm not sure if this is gonna be the most concise video 
or as to whether it's going to be as helpful as it was when of my understanding this isn't a professional sort of explanation this is just how I had to word it in my mind to try and explain it to myself so that I knew what I was dealing with and the ECU master DT3 did work for its purpose um, it did change the air fuel ratio and I did manage to get some functionality of tuning out of it and this was removed before I actually got the car on the road I just managed to get the car running and adjust the AFRs with my um, AEM AFR gate but yeah I just wanted that little bit of extra protection and that knock sensor that you saw in the unboxing video obviously that will allow me to stop any prevention uh, that will be a prevention measure against knock engine knock so it's just going to be an all round better package for me to keep this car safe in the long run and be a healthy engine with a good tune on it but that will be the next thing finding someone to tune the car but yeah, thank you guys very much for watching. I do hope this managed to help somebody out there. Um, I know it's been a talky video and it's not been really car related as far as putting things on the car. But I do hope that this did manage to get some assistance to people if they're struggling to understand DET3s. But yeah, thanks for watching guys. I'll see you in the next one. Take care. Bye bye.